15 trophies, loads of goals, and some of the most beautiful football the game has ever seen. These aren't video game numbers, I'm talking about arguably the greatest team in the world, Prime Barcelona. But to understand how good these guys were, I've got to go back to where it all started. See, back in the 90s, Barcelona was a pretty good team. They'd gotten a couple of superstar players to play for the club. Guys like Luis Figo, Rivaldo, and even Ronaldo Nazario. But at the turn of the early 2000s, it became clear that Barca wasn't that dominant team they used to be anymore. A new superpower was about to take over. Down in Madrid, Real Madrid were making huge statements. After Florentino Perez took over as president of Real, he made it his mission to make Madrid become the biggest club in the world. And his first target was stealing Barca's best player off their hands. Ouch! They took Figo from Barca, paid him more wages, and made him a Galactico. Still, Barca did manage to put up a fight in domestic terms, but the truth is, they were always in second place. Heck, from the 1998-99 season to the 2004-05 season, the only trophies they won were the Copa Catalunya, even had clubs like Deportivo and Valencia winning the league in that time. To make it worse, Real kept getting stronger. Beckham, Zidane, and even another one of Barca's ex-players, Ronaldo Nazario, had joined from Inter Milan. And now, they were the undisputed biggest force in Spain. Barca sent to the shadows. But in the 2004-05 season, all of that changed. Because, for the first time in a long time, it looked like Barca was back. League champions, first recognized trophy in over six years. A huge part of the reason the squad had become that good was due to the signings they made. Under coach Frank Reichard, they brought in guys like Samuel Etu from Mallorca, who bagged them 29 goals in all competitions that season. Deco joined from Champions League winners Porto to add depth to the midfield and promoted players like this 16-year-old kid from the B team to the senior squad. Lionel Messi. Winning the league showed Barca was clearly on the right path, and all the foundational work was starting to pay off, and it got better too. In 2005-06, they conquered Europe. A first Champions League title in 14 years, retained the league title, and won the Spanish Super Cup too. Three trophies that season! But at this point, it seemed like they'd reached the peak. In the following campaign, they failed to reach the same highs they had done in the previous season, finishing second in the league and even losing the Club World Cup final. In the Champions League, they got knocked out in the round of 16, lost the UEFA Super Cup, and had to rely on Ronaldinho for the goals with 24 in all competitions. Something wasn't right. 2007-08 came along, and for the higher-ups at the club, it was about fixing everything that had gone wrong. Thanks to guys like Johan Krauf, rather than buying the best talent in the world or ballers with hype, they believed in producing their own. For a couple of seasons, it kind of felt like they had forgotten that, so now it was all about returning to basics. And when they did, they realized they had a hidden gem waiting to be unlocked. Lionel Messi was still in his developmental phase at the time, but even with that, he was still one of the best players in the world. This season, he got more opportunities in the team and featured alongside guys like Ronaldinho and Samuel Etu. And even though Barca didn't win any trophies that season, it was clear that they were a work in progress. To hit the next level, though, Barca's president, Joan Laporta, knew they'd have to make some pretty big changes. And in 2008-09, one man came and changed everything. Pep Guardiola had been promoted as coach of the Barca B team. To head the first team at first, the appointment looked dodgy. I mean, the guy had zero experience with managing a first team side. And Barca needed to win trophies to compete again. But Pep was backed by Johan Krauf himself. Pep hadn't even spent weeks at the club when he started making huge changes. Ronaldinho left for AC Milan, and his replacement was to signal the start of something huge. Thierry Henry from Arsenal! Big! Pep also promoted players like Sergio Busquets to the first team, 
brought back Gerard Pique from Manchester United, cut Danny Alves from Sevilla, gave more game time to players like Xavi and Iniesta in midfield, and in attack, he switched it up to deadly effect. With Henri's arrival, everyone expected him to play down the middle at Barca. He was one of the best strikers of his generation. Plus, the club still had Samuel Eto'o at the time, so it was interesting to watch to see how this one was going to play out. Pep's answer, though, was a different ball game. He moved Messi down the middle, played Eto'o on the right and Henri on the left. Some thought he was crazy, but in May 2009, Pep had proved all his critics wrong. They won the treble that year, amazing! But you see guys, it was more than that. Barca had started playing a brand of football that was impossible to compete with. Pep had brought his brand of possession-based football into the mix, but he also had players who knew what it was to play for Barca. Guys willing to give anything to defend the badge, and they played their hearts out with some beautiful stuff. I remember watching this one and thinking, what the heck just happened? This was the sign right there. Madrid had the money, but the tide had shifted. Barca was back. 2009 was a very special year for the club. They won six trophies that year. Now that's a lot of trophy lifts. Now, Barca had established themselves as big players in the game. Messi had just won his first Ballon d'Or, and they had all eyes on them coming into 2009-10. The major achievement here was winning the league, but in truth, off the highs of what they did in the season before, it wasn't quite as successful. In the Champions League, they got knocked out 3-2 on aggregate by Inter Milan. The transfers too didn't exactly work out as planned. Samuel Eto'o left on a $46 million swap deal to join Inter Milan, and months later, he showed Barca what they were missing the only player in the game's history to win back-to-back -back trebles. Ibrahimovic left the following year. Pep and his boys knew what they had to do if they wanted to get back, and it's safe to say La Liga was going to be pretty heated to watch, especially in the coming campaign, because their biggest rivals had started making huge waves again. Jose Mourinho, the guy who knocked them out and stopped them from reaching the Champions League final on Madrid turf, was now the new coach of Real. Add that to Cristiano Ronaldo moving to Madrid two years back, and the competition between the two was going on full steam. Until January, at least, because at that point, in the 2010-11 season, Barca hit another gear and was simply unstoppable. This time, they got it right. Now, Messi was the central key to backing the goals up top. Pep had added players like David Villa and Javier Mascherano, and sold Thierry Henry, Yaya Toure, and Zlatan Ibrahimovic with a couple of other names. And this, guys, was where prime Barcelona was truly at. Completely unstoppable. The football they played that season was somehow even better than the 2009 version. Now it was purer, more controlling. From averaging 51% possession in that treble-winning season of 2009, they'd gotten the numbers up to 70%. Barca wasn't just winning games, they were dominating the opposition. You know you're that good when you have one of the best managers of all time praising your team after losing in a final. No one has ever given us a hiding like that. It was more than just the performance. They mesmerized you with their passing. Possession was everything. Control and obsession. Sir Alex was stunned. The Champions League scoreline showed 3-1 to Barca that night. But the reality was, it almost looked like a training session. United was no match for this team, just like every other club that had faced them before. 2011-12 was a mixed bag. Pep had announced that he'd be leaving at the end of the season, signaling the end of his time at Barca. And to honor him that campaign, they'd won the Copa del Rey, UEFA Super Cup, FIFA Club World Cup, and Spanish Super Cup. Madrid won La Liga that season, but even they know they had nothing on that Barca team from 2011. 
present day now. And even though Barca managed to repeat another treble in 2015, recreating another iconic trio with Messi, Neymar, and Suarez, the MSN, over 120 goals that season, dominating Europe under Luis Enrique and winning La Liga, the Champions League, and the Copa del Rey. But even this team still doesn't quite compare to the breathtaking side Pep put out in 2011. The 2015 team was insane all round, due to the amount of talent they had in the squad. In the last couple of years, the club has had it rough. They were in the rebuilding phase again. Joan Laporta is back as president to try and return them to the glory days. And with Xavi, Pep's former student as head coach, who knows, maybe there's another prime Barca team just around the corner. Legends who all play beautiful football and subscribe to Goalzone.